Hello everyone, good morning! Welcome to Let's Teach with Dr. S. This is Dr. Sara Namoko and I am your partner in your teaching practice. Bito friends, naaman good ko YouTube channel nga Let's Do Research with Dr. S. Anya, kay dili man ni research, so yung ani na lang akong intro. Okay? So anyway, welcome again to this um, uh, webinar tutorial dili tutorial it's a webinar nag invite ko ni ma'am Saiki and i feel honored uh, thank you very much tablo national high school you had been my home for 13 years and i found a beautiful family in tablo national high school and i will forever look at you as part of my growing up years as a person and as a professional okay every time gawas ko din sa fatima Mulingi gyud ko sa Tablon because Tablon has been a part of my beautiful 13 years and you will forever be part of my life. Mom Saiki invited me for this talk. I am going to share with you about browsing the 21st century teaching methodologies. Okay? I'm sure most of you are already aware of this. Uh, let us just do some review about teaching methodologies. Okay? I'm sure with the demands of the modular modular modality of learning, daghang iprint, mag-retrieve, mag-distribute, mag-retrieve, checking all these papers. So, I think ali malimtan na to, no? Ang mga methodologies. So, it's I think it's good to remind ourselves about this every now and then. So, welcome to Browsing the 21st Century Teaching Methodologies. In this webinar, I will be covering three topics. Uh, it will be the 21st century framework of learning, teaching learning strategies for the 21st century, and the importance of human connection, especially that we are in the teaching profession. Okay? Perhaps all of you have already seen this figure, and most of you have known about this, but still it pays to review what this P21 framework is it's all about. It is called P21 because it is a collaboration, a partnership of many uh, stakeholders who are interested in, and who love teaching. And they conceptualize the idea of interdependency of these skills of our young learners. We have learned nga Moabot ang time nga daghan kaayo ang mga trabaho nga mawala na because of robotics, because of artificial intelligences. But according to scholars, one thing that AIs, artificial intelligences and robotics cannot replace are the soft skills. Bisan pag unsaon sa mga engineers, sa mga scientists, pag design of robotics and in, uh, artificial intelligences, dili good mapulihan ang mga soft skills. And these are the skills that we want to develop within our students. Now, of course, among us and within our students. The P21 framework for 21st century learning is categorized into three skills. Although each of these skills are categorized distinctly, but let us remember that together... These three distinct uh, categories should be interrelated and interconnected as we teach our students to develop this skill. First of the 21st century skills are referring to learning and innovation skills, which talks about the development of the critical thinking skills of our students, their creativity and innovation, their collaboration skills, and their communication skills. Next is the life and career skills, which refers to the flexibility, leadership, initiative, productivity, and social skills of our students. And the last category is about information, media, and technology skills, which involves information, media, and technology skills, or mastery of these different skills. Now, as teachers, how are we going to do that? Let us look into the, the details of the Partnership 21 Framework for 21st Century. The P21 Framework has different domains that we have to look into as we integrate the different disciplines of learning. 
First is the goal. What is the goal of the P21 framework? Its goal is focusing on the development of the skills, knowledge, and expertise of the students that they must master to succeed in work and in life. Dili lang aron nga makapasar sila sa atong klase or dili aron nga makapasar dili lang aron makapasar sa college but that they should be able to thrive in the demands in the complexity of the demands of the 21st century. Dapat andam sila. And then while the framework aims to develop uh, these skills within the students, it also equips, it also provides the teachers with the support so that the teacher is enabled and empowered to teach those skills. Because the framework focuses on the con interconnectedness of the different disciplines of learning and it also emphasizes for deeper learning. The, the P21 framework is anchored on the belief that children needs the proper opportunities and avenues to gain these skills for career. And they, all, they can learn this when we integrate the different disciplines of learning. So we have the English and Filipino, math, sciences, and other social sciences subjects. No? Katong Araling Panlipunan, MAPE, TLE, Values Education, Kinahanglan, they should be integrated together so that we develop the students as a whole by engaging the students in activities that promote creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. Okay, I remember one time, in I anecdote, ang tao daw, nangay daw, kung nag, nag, nag isya nga, mubo may good kaya kong patience, so, saan man ako nga, ma-develop na ko ang akong patience within myself. So, nag-ampo siya. Lord, please hatagi ko ang patience right now. No? So, well, abi, abi sa tao o kung i-pray niya, ihatag sa gino. Well, indeed, God answered his prayers. Sa unsang paagi, gihatagan siya sa gino. Dagan kay nga trials. Daghan kay nga problema, daghan nga mean people around him within the work and even in his family. Why? You cannot teach communication skills, you cannot teach critical thinking skills by writing them on the blackboard. You teach these skills by engaging the students in meaningful activities as such the students will develop these skills. In the same way, katung tao ar ma-exercise na iyang patience, gatagan siya daghang pagsulay, daghang mga tao nga panaw, panuway, aron nga ma-exercise na iyang patience. Okay? How about the instructional approach in the uh, P21 framework? Instructional approach in this framework is directed both within the classroom and out of the classroom activities. Therefore, kanang ato mga estudyante, let them go, let them play, let them explore the world. Let them explore the real learning experiences. In order to achieve this, the teachers need the support system such as guidelines for assessment, professional development, and learning environments so that they are prepared to work within the P21 framework. Therefore, dili lang di ay ang mga ang mga teachers ang na-involved ani, but also the administrators. Administrators, curriculum developers, policy makers, it is in your hands to design these guidelines for the teachers so that they can create a meaningful and engaging learning activities for the students and subsequently will make the students uh, learn this uh, 21st century learning skills. For the methods of assessment or the standards and assessments in the P21 framework, the focus is on the skills associated with 21st century content and also how we measure this content in relation to the 21st century skills that we are aiming at. Okay, This may include inquiry-based learning assessment, 
project-based assessment, standardized testing, and portfolio development. Later on, we are going to discuss this one by one. And then, for the competency basis, 21 framework includes uh, the core subjects. As I, have, as I have mentioned earlier, these are the languages, mathematics, science, history, TLE, MAPE, values education. We cannot, we cannot do away with this. These are all very important skills. Uh, these are all very important core content. And take note, friends, that when we teach these subjects, this should not be taught individually and in isolation. Take note that the 21st century focuses on the connectedness of learning with emphasis of deeper, more in-depth learning. So imagine when we, when we as teachers of different subjects, we, we discuss together, is guta na to, no, is guta na to, unsa na to pag, uh, integrate ang atong mga lessons aron nga ma ma-appreciate ni estudyante unsa ang significance sa algebraic expression in farming unsaon pag nga ma-appreciate ni estudyante ang mga uh, topic sa chemistry kung mag na sila sa MAPE or sa TLE no so they should be able to appreciate these um, individual subjects as a whole because when we integrate these subjects together, any mga content, core content sa ato mga subjects, when we integrate them, we are actually including or we are actually uh, developing the global awareness of our students, the financial, economic, business, and entrepreneurial literacy, the civic literacy, health literacy, and environmental literacy. When I was a high school student, may ko nga, so magilabot aning algebra nga nung magilisod lisod magil ko aning nga nung pangitaon magil sa ako ang akong ex hugot no nga pangita why no sani siya please don't ask me why please don't ask me about my ex hugot no so nga nung magil ning algebra I'm sorry math but it's really my waterloo but the point is if na ma-appreciate sa bata, sa isudyante na to, ang connectedness sa mga lessons, then they will understand why they are learning this competence. The competency basis for the P21 framework includes the three categories that we have mentioned earlier. One of that is the learning and innovation skills, which includes the development of the creative and innovation skills of our students, the critical thinking and problem-solving skills, collaboration and communication again dili nato ni siya matudlo by writing on the blackboard or by doing a lecture about this we can teach them by engage by letting our students engage in meaningful and engaging activities classroom activities or even modular activities later on we are going to learn how we do that the next one is the information and media technology skills here, we teach our students, we inculcate in our students the, the skills, the knowledge and skills, how to access, evaluate, use, and manage the information from the internet, and then how they can apply technology in effectively into their projects, and how to analyze and create media products. Take note, friends, that it is equally important that our students learn their ethical considerations in using cyber, uh, in using the technology. Dapat mahibalupod sila at which point nga ginabully na sila or gaka experience na nila ang cyberbullying. So, this and all dapat na to matudlo sa ato mga isudyante. And finally, the life and career skills. Okay? So, walay pulos tong uban nga skills, tong media literacy, tong uh, critical thinking skills, kung dili na to na sila ma-apply in critical life and career skills. So, what are these skills? This involves the flexibility and adaptability, initiative and self-direction, social and cultural skills, productivity and accountability, and leadership and responsibility. So, kaning tanan, this encompass the P21 framework that we have to consider when we think of the teaching strategies or teaching methodologies 
as we teach our students or as we deal with our students, whether this class is through online learning or through modular learning or through face-to-face -face learning. So, dapat makonsider nato ni silang tanan. Although, dili man necessary nga, dapat kanig yung tanan nga components na ha, ah, but at least a combination of two or three competencies within the activities that we are giving our students. Okay? Take note, ang, while we teach them with the content, while we lecture them with the content, while our module includes the lesson content, the content of our lesson, Ang activities nga atong gi-infuse din ha should be the ones that will encourage the students or should be the activities that will uh, teach the students the 21st century skills. We have mentioned about ICT. So nga nung importante man ang ICT tools in learning. In my, in my dissertation, and I'm sure in your day-to-day -day experiences, ICT tools help enhance effective learning. How? Of course, when the students Google the information, they acquire the knowledge. When the students are equipped with, with the skills, how to synthesize knowledge, they are able to create knowledge. And then they will collaborate this knowledge with other peers, with their classmates, probably with friends, Within their classroom, from other schools, or from all over the world, they can collaborate with the, with the development or with the creation of this knowledge. And they are also able to share this knowledge not only with friends, but also around the globe. And this is the beauty of ICT tools in learning. Now, why teaching tools, why ICT tools are beneficial, especially for teachers? These ICT tools helps support innovative teaching methods for the teachers. And then it is also, of course, it is convenient to teach. For example, during this pandemic time, wala ko na, dili ko, ko kahibaluan ng technology niya. Wala po ta kahibaluan ng YouTube, for example. So, saan man ako pag-deliver, di ba, it is convenient to de deliver my lecture through video, and then ang inyo po, as on your own end po, balag, dili mo makapaminaw on the day of the schedule sa inset, pero pwede ragyud mabalikan if you are willing to learn. So, for example, in my students, sa ako mga students sa research undergrad, or even in my doctoral students, mayun sila nga, ma'am, nakatabang yun ug maayo ang videos nga yung develop because pwede na mo balik-balikan kung na ay mga concepts nga wala na mo nasabtan. You see, ICT tools in learning are very helpful, helpful in teaching because it is convenient. No? It gives us convenience. And, of course, it enhances creative teaching. On the part of the students, it, it provides students meaningful and engaging learning experiences. It, it is also an avenue for them to have an open and easy access for communication. And it also allows for authentic assessment of learning all in all ict tools in learning are helpful in equipping our learners for the 21st century skills the question is how are we going to use that all right so how do we use ict tools in our teaching and learning practice i am going to share with you i am going to show you uh, the pedagogy wheel which was conceptualized by dr alan carrington if you can see at the core of the wheel, this is the Bloom's Taxonomy of Learning. Okay? Meaning to say that before you think of which tools or what activity to use, think of what skills do you want your students to develop. Do you want your students to remember? Or do you want your students to understand? Or do you want your students to be able to apply what they have understood? And then you increase the level of difficulty of learning up to the creating stage. Take note, my dear friends, that our student cannot understand something if they don't remember it. In the same way, our students cannot apply something, cannot apply a concept if they do not understand it. 
eventually the student cannot evaluate they cannot create something if they cannot analyze if they cannot apply if they cannot understand and if they don't remember so meaning to say that we should satisfy first the lower bottom we satisfy these needs of our students before we can demand them of the of the higher order thinking skills and it is a great deal of challenge for us now after you have identified what level of learning you want your students it is now time to determine what are the action words that you will use in each of these say for example you want your students to remember something now in your learning objective you use smart learning objectives when you say smart learning objectives these are verbs that are specific measurable achievable relevant and within time frame say for example you say at the end of the lesson the students are expected to know the definition of love now my dear friends how are we going to evaluate or how are we going to assess whether our students know love we cannot we cannot measure it right however if we say the students are able to define love we can measure that the students has that the student has remembered something because he can define the term in the same way, if we want our students to understand the concept, then probably we will use the word, the verbs, explain, the verbs such as explain, summarize, or translate. And if we want them to apply a concept, then probably we can say uh, the students are able to demonstrate their ability to implement the learned methods and procedures. Now, if we want our students to analyze, then we can, we can use uh, verbs such as differentiate between relevant and irrelevant, determine relationships, and recognize organization of content. All of these activities will involve the brains of the students, the neural activities of our students, to analyze the criteria or the, uh, analyze the concept and if we want our students to evaluate something then pr then really we use words such as judge or critique or review and if we want them to create something the verbs that we might use are generate ideas design plans or produce something Okay, of course, these are just reviews of your Bloom's taxonomy, but I tell you, friends, it took me a while to understand the essence of Bloom's taxonomy. While I was in college, I was to memorize the exam. But actually, I was and it was only when I was already teaching that I realized that I was remembering, understanding, and blah, blah, blah. No? So, it's good to remind us from time to time about these concepts, about these theories. After you have identified the action verbs that you will use related to the level of learning that you want your students to be equipped with, now it's time to determine the different activities that you want your students to engage in to develop these skills. Okay, and finally, if you have identified the activities, then it's time for you to, to think about the different ICT tools to use when you teach. Of course, dili ka ini applicable sa tanan na to nga estudyante, pero pwede ni magamit sa uban na to nga estudyante. These are the different web to tools that we might use, that we might know, kamo basin na ibaluan ninyo, Unsaon pagamit, and of course, there are thousands others out there. Just explore the internet. Remember, friends, that it is your pedagogy. What you believe is the best method, what you believe is the best strategy for the students to learn. 
Your pedagogy should be the determining factor for you to identify the different ICT tools that you will use in your lear teaching and learning activities. Therefore, it is your responsibility to think about how the application might contribute to your set of educational goals for the program or for the subject or for the lesson that you are teaching. Now, to summarize, for example, you want to develop the remembering stage of learning. So, the action verbs that you might use are define, recall, identify. And the learning activities that involves uh, ICT tools will be searching or googling or bookmarking from the internet. So, you will use the Google, the Google Chrome or the Twitter or the Wikipedia. If, for example, you want, to, you want your students to understand something, therefore, the learning objectives, the le verbs that you will use in your learning objectives will be explain, translate, or summarize. And your learning activities would be journaling, word processing, and you will use WordPress, Prezi, and Evernote, and some other um, ICT tools available or ICT applications. If, for example, you want your students to apply their knowledge about a certain concept, then you might, in, uh, you might use the words play, implement, or simulate in your learning objectives. And the learning activities that you might want your students to do are movie making, mind mapping, and therefore you will use Blackboard, Screencast-O-Matic, or Wise Mapping. If you want your students to analyze, then you might use categorize, deduce, or differentiate. And the, the activities that will be involved are spreadsheeting or diagramming. Therefore, you will use Poplet or Excel. And if you want your students to evaluate, then the verbs that you use will be critic, conduce, or judge. And the learning activities will be self-evaluation or critiquing. And then you will expose the students to TED Talks or you will expose them to Edmodo where you can engage them with this critiquing and judging activities. And finally, if you want your students to create something, then you might uh, use action verbs such as generate ideas, design, produce, and Activities will include po podcasting, multimedia presentation, and they can use the uh, picture collage, basic creator, movie creator, and whatever, whatever tools that are available in the internet. It's just up to you how to use them. Now, take note, friends, that the decision to use the different ICT tools for teaching and learning will always go back to your pedagogy. What is it that you want your students to learn? After having identified the competencies that you want your students to master, then it's time for you to think about the learning activities and the corresponding tools that you might use in teaching these competencies. Now, let's go to the different 21st century teaching strategies. I'm sure many of you have learned about blended learning. Karun nga panahon na, at this time, at this pandemic time, many schools and many, many basic education schools and higher education institutions are employing the blended learning modalities of learning. So, when we say blended learning, it is an infusion of face-to-face -face learning and online learning. Although, sa Tablo Nation, in the case of Tablo National High School, most of our modality is modular. And I understand that. No? It's a bit challenging. But anyway, I believe that the wisdom that you will get from this inset is not only applicable during this pandemic time, but it is also applicable when the schools are open. Are when the schools will be open for the students to come probably and hopefully next year. Blended learning is the umbrella for all learning types which includes the face-to-face -face and online learning. One of that is the flipped classroom. Ngayon gitawag man siya 
flip classroom. Because in traditional learning, di ba mag-lecture si maestra sa classroom, and then towards the end of the class, the teacher will say, okay, for your assignment, do this at home. Now, the problem is, kung muuli na o sa balay ang estudyante, who will teach the students at home? Okay lang kung ay nahibaluan si papa o si mama. Or na ay ate or kuya nga makatudlo, or na ay lola o lolo, or uncle o auntie nga makatudlo, or helper nga makatudlo. What if wala? So, for example, in the case of my children, although ang ilang mama kabaluman mo tudlo, but the problem is, ang time ni mama is so hectic. Busy kayo si mama. Dili halos makatudlo. So, there is also a problem. What about the students whose parents can hardly read or write? To whom will this will your students go if they need assistance with their assignment? So because of this problem, scholars have I conceptualized the flip learning wherein the lecture is done, the lectures are done at the comfort of the home, no? So, ang mga lectures, it can be done online. Pwede niyo ipadala ang modules para basahon ni estudyante or mag-assignment kaglibon, ipabasa sa estudyante. And then, the assignment, the homework, nga kung sa traditional learning dito sa Balay Buhaton, ang homework sa estudyante will be done din ha sa atong classroom wherein na ata nga teacher, we are the experts to help our students apply the concepts that they have learned or we are there in the classroom to help our students understand the concepts that they have read while they are at home or the concepts nga gibasa sa libro nga gibasa sa internet gitanaw sa YouTube dito nila nagibuhat sa ilang balay or sa ilang sa cafeteria, sa canteen, or kung asa na nila gitanaw, and then they will do the activities din ha sa atong classroom, nga na ata being the experts of the lesson. In this way, ang lower order thinking skills such as knowledge and a comprehension are done at home. Dili kay sila magkinhanglan o guidance from the expert. Alternately, the higher order thinking skills are done and achieved in the class kauban sa expert nga teacher. Okay? So, this is the beauty of flipped classroom. Another teaching strategy for the 21st century is the project-based learning. In this way, we are encouraging our students to engage in activities that will develop their communication skills, their critical thinking skills, their collaboration skills, and their innovativeness, their skills to solve a problem. An example is this, student farming. When you let your students do student farming, the students will actually learn lessons about science, social studies, math, and economics through planting their own organic farm. When you do project-based learning, example, ikaw si uh, science teacher, you coordinate with social studies teacher, math teacher, and economics teacher. TLE teacher ba kaha? And then you discuss among yourselves unsa kaha ang ato ipag-project sa atong estudyante. Aron nga, ang lessons nga iyang natunan sa atong tanan, say for example, lima ka-teachers. So, ang lessons nga iyang natunan sa atong tanan, iyang ma-integrate into one big project. So, once you have agreed that among yourselves, kamo nga mga teachers, kita nga mga teachers, the students will now do the following. So, they will do research about the crop that they want to plant. And then, they will figure out how to take care of the plant. What are the things that they will need to take care of the plant? And then, they will also use a budget to determine what materials they must purchase. So, after they have figured out the different perspectives in this project, nakatanom na sila, naalagaan ilag sakto, kay ila tunggi research, and then, pag-abot sa time, nakaharvest sila, 
Then, ilang halin, pwede nila bahin-bahin nun, pwede po nimo sila i-encourage to contribute that to a cause or to a fundraising activity. Di ba, Bongga? So, sa may imugihin mo, wala na ka nagtudlo unsa nga klase nga crops. Wala na ka nagtudlo unsa unsa nga materials ang gamiton. You did not teach them unsa on pagplow. You did not teach them how to, wala na ka nagsulat-sulat sa bitay max, no? How to take care of the plants. Kaya imo silang gi-empower. You empower them to learn these concepts on their own. And then, sila na ang nag-create sa ilang learning. Sila ang nag-discover sa ilang knowledge. And they are the ones who implemented this knowledge into actual projects. Di ba, unsa man ang imong role ka ron? You, are, you have become the guide on their side and not the sage on the stage. Di ba, bongga? Of course, you are there to guide. For example, na sila mga questions, you can answer their questions. But then again, Sila ang nakadiscover, sila ang nakatuon sa knowledge, and sila po ang nag-implement, and sila ang naka-harvest naka sa ilang natunan. Another teaching strategy is the inquiry-based learning. Now, remember the old Chinese pro proverbs. It says, tell me and I will forget. Show me and I will remember. Involve me and I will understand. Now, in the inquiry-based learning, the students are encouraged to investigate, to record, to discover, to think of innovative ways, to try, to reflect, and to be curious about the things around them. In this way, you are actually engaging their creativity, their critical thinking skills, Aron nga mas ma-equip sila for the complex demands of the 21st century. So, an example is here. Na-observe na ito, no, nga polluted na yung kaya environment. And you want your students to find a solution to this pollution. So, in small groups, by the way, when I say small groups, by, by, by practice, dili kay ko ga, ga encourage o five or more, no? Kung mahimo, less than 5 students. Kay, sure ko ka ng lima kay estudyante, ang usa or duha ana, kay kuan ra siya ng mga kapwa, mga daw limbs. And we don't want that because I, we want everybody in the small group to be involved in the activities. So, how do we do that? We let the students review the information about pollution and then we will require them to create a unique approach how to manage or to eliminate a certain type of pollution. So, imo silang hatagan o guidelines, hatagan nato sila o learning objectives, hatagan nato sila o guidelines, hatagan nato sila sa rubrics. By the way, we give the rubrics at the start of the activity. We don't give the rubrics towards the end of the activity. Nga naman, aron nga kahibalo si estudyante unsa ang imong i-expect from them. And then, matingala na lang ta, no? We will be amazed. We will be, um, yeah, we will be amazed with how the students can surpass our expectations. So, it will be good if we give them the rubrics at the start of the activity. So, we have also to remind them, for example, aning a case nga problema, we have to remind them that there are certain approaches nga dili, dili within their capacities, na, not within their capabilities. So, remind them nga pwede nga ang solution will only be to, to minimize the pollution if not totally eliminate the pollution. So, you enc we encourage the students to find ways how to deal appropriately with this pollution problem. So, in this way, we allow our students to investigate. We allow them to record their findings, to record their observations about pollution. We allow them to discover knowledge how to solve the pollution problem. We allow them to think of ways to think if kaniba nga solution is plausible within their capabilities. We allow them to try to experiment ideated solution. We allow them to reflect kung sakto ba tong nga solution ilang gi, gi implement, ilang gi huna huna o ilang gi implement. And we allow them to be curious more about other forms of pollution. 
So, isn't it wonderful if kani nga mga activities mo ay atong ihatag sa atong mga estudyante? And finally, one of the teaching strategies that I want to I want us to be reminded about is portfolio assignment. Nakita na ko kang Angel o kang Joshua being students of the DepEd schools nga na sila mga portfolio. So this is just a reminder of how we are doing portfolio. First in the portfolio is uh, we nganong gabuhat ta og portfolio why do we assign our students with portfolio is that when the, when our students do portfolio they tend to reflect on their weaknesses asa sila or asa nga area sila weak sa ilang learning therefore the, my dear friends nindot nga makahatag ta og immediate feedback sa ilang mga activities so that the students can reflect asa sila naluya asa ang ilang weakness asa sila na sayop they can as they reflect then they can correct their mistakes and improve their learnings we also stress that in portfolio projects we stress more on quality rather than on quantity there, that is why dili kaayo ta mag matter kung pidag, padaghanay no in portfolio assessment dili ni padaghanay but kadtong quality kadtong asa nakatuon kadtong mga na, kadtong mga formative nga activities ayaw na to ipaapil no kadtong mga activities kadtong mga quizzes nga makita nimo nga naagyoy improvement ang bata after the formative feedback that you have provided them and take note that it is very important that the students are reminded of the learning objectives of the activity aron nga kahibalo sila asa sila padulong og nganong ila nang ginabuhat i remember an anecdote shared by dr dinagsao i don't know if it happened in her class or iyara pudning nadunggan but nalingaw lang ko and i want to share it with you naglasi daw ang teacher all the gestures with all the instructional materials available yang gigamit. So, ang mga estudyante, okay, naminaw, ala na. And then, towards the end, ingon ang teacher, okay, class, get one half sheet of paper, we will have a quiz. And usual, as usual, ingon ang estudyante, one half, mag-quiz ta, ma'am. And then, the student said, ma'am, nagsulti, unta ka nga mag-quiz ta, naminaw unta mi. You see, it's important that our students are informed of the learning objectives. Aron kahibalo sila unsa imong expect of them towards the end of the unit, the chapter, or the lesson. Uh, before ni mo implement ang portfolio, it's important that you stress to our students what are the expected contents that you are going to check from that portfolio. And please do not forget to give them their assessment or the rubrics by which we are going to check their work. And take note, my dear friends, the assessment should measure the learning objectives that you have set. And finally, one of the teaching strategies that I want to share with you is the social and emotional learning. I want us to go back to this. While we are interested to develop the critical thinking skills, the creativity, collaboration, and communication, importante ba nga even at this category of learning or this yes category of skills that we want our students to develop, is it important that the emotional skills, the social skills of the students are also developed? Yes. Dapat ma-develop gihapon, di ba? Appeal. How about here, life and career skills? Kinahanglan ba ang social and emotional skills of our students? Yes, of course, because we are dealing with people. How about in the information, media, and technology skills? Do we need the social and emotional skills? Yes, that is why it's important na ang mga estudyante kabalo kung kanus ang magamit o capital letters sa ilang texting. No? Because even in the way that we text, magmatter good. No, imbis kay nagtext ka palumanay ra ka ito nga pagka-text, pero sa pikas nga end kay nakakapital letter di ito tanan iyong pagka-text, ang pagbasa kay pinabundak na kaayo. Nya na pagyung mga exclamation marks, no? 
So, you see, even in ICT, even in information, media, and technology skills, we also need the emotional and social skills. In other words, the social and emotional learning encompasses all the other competencies that we want to develop for our students in the, in the complexity of the 21st century. Now, what are these domains of social and emotional learning? We have self-awareness, responsible decision-making, relationship, skill, relationship skills, social awareness, and self-management. Now, according to Daniel Gold, Goldman, who is an author and a science journalist, if your emotional abilities are not in hand, if you don't have self-awareness, if you are not able to manage your distressing emotions, if you cannot have empathy and have effective relationship, then no matter how smart you are, you are not going very far. You see how important the social and emotional learning skills are in the 21st century. Now, there are different classroom techniques that you might use in the social and emotional learning. Uh, one, uh, you can do a research on this in Google. I'm just going to share them with you one by one. You can do visualization to release stress, noise isolation, name the emotion, ask the students to identify what they feel. Are they angry? Are they upset? Are they sad? Are they lonely? Are they happy? Let them name their emotions. Then let them write down what they feel. If it is a sad, a bad, a negative emotion, let the students rip up the paper and throw away the stress, literally and figuratively. Probably you can also include quote of the day. And then uh, you can ask the students where he came from or where, where the students came from. That is why she or he feels that emotion. And then uh, you can also apply the starting positive technique, motivational moments, or group sharing. Now, in the workplace, kay kita, no? uh, uh, I would be hypocrite if I say, wala ni giagi sa ato, ah, no? Whether I was in Tablo National High School or dirin dinhan ako sa USDP, every one of us went through this different uh, emotional challenges, social and emotional challenges. And there are skills that we have to develop in our workplace. And I believe these are helpful as we deal with our students. Okay, among these are showing interest to others. And then focus on your body language. Speak clearly and speak in an acceptable tone. Remember, it is not only what you say, but how you say it that counts. And then work on your listening skills. Kausay rabano, kanang tempted ka ita nga mo istorya po doon appeal. But one of the beautiful traits that I learned from my Japanese classmate is the listening skills. Oh, observe and listen. And when that Japanese classmate will open her mouth, makita ni mo ang wisdom. Madunga ni mo ang wisdom. And then, let's try to socialize in new settings. Of course, when you talk with another person, maintain eye contact. Be assertive but not aggressive. Choose effective communication channels. Kung kaya ragyod ni mo itawag, itawag kaysa sa i-text. Be flexible. Take on a challenge. Remain positive. Accept criticism. Be respectful. Be yourself. Have patience. Ditch the distraction. Show empathy. Put yourself in the shoes of others. Be more confident and learn how to small talk. Now, these are some social emotional skills that you might develop not only in your workplace as you deal with your colleague, but most especially with your students. All right. After having learned the P21 framework, the 21st century skills, and the teaching strategies that we might want to use as in our teaching and learning practice, as we want to develop the 21st century skills of our students, we want to ask ourselves, does pedagogy alone work? 
According to Gan Yofu in 2013, the interaction between the teacher and the students, take note, the interaction during the teaching and learning process encourages the students to search for knowledge. The author did not say it is the teaching methodology or the teaching strategy of the teacher, nor it is the pedagogy of the teacher, but it is the connection of the teacher with his or her students that makes the student long for knowledge. Further studies reveal that students with higher academic performance experienced a higher level of life satisfaction. In addition, according to Pianta in 2001, positive teacher-student relationship as evidenced by the teacher's reports of low conflict, a high degree of intimacy and support, and little dependency on the part of the student have been shown to support the student's adjustment to school, contribute to their social skills, uphold academic performance, and foster the student's resiliency in academic performance. You see, there is no mention of the teacher's pedagogy here. Instead, it is the relationship, the human connection, the human relationship between a teacher and a student that uh, influences the academic performance of the students in our class. Meanwhile, according to Gilman and Eubner in 2006, Life satisfaction is an important factor for youth because children who reported higher levels of life satisfaction also report higher levels of academic performance. They have higher interpersonal relationships and they have higher intrapersonal functioning in comparison to those students who reported low levels of satisfaction. I remember when I was in Malaysia, I and my supervisor did a qualitative study among grade 6 students. No? Kani nga mga estudyante, mga Malay, Malay uh, Indian Malaysians, and Chinese Malaysians. And then, we asked them, unsa nga mga factors ang makakontribute nga nung ganahan sila sa eskwilahan? Nga nung ganahan sila mo excel academically? And you know what? Ang pinakatap nga factor yun, is ang human relationships, ang ilang relationship with the teacher. Ganahan sila atong teacher nga masultihan nila sa ilang problema, kay inig sa balay daw kuno, wala, dili daw kuno, maka, dili daw maminaw ang ilang parents sa ilang problem, pero sa iskulahan, maminaw gyo daw kuno ang teacher niya. Tanawon pa gyo daw kuno sila sa mata, well, gaistorya sila. Napagani time nga, Nagdaot daw kuno mura gihilantan ano gadula dai sila sa field and then na, na natumba ang bata nagdagandagan daw ang teacher nagidala sa teacher ang bata sa sa clinic ingon ingon ang bata you know what unsay gisulti sa bata that is an indication nga ang akong teacher di I can be my mother at school you see simple gestures my dear friends would mean so much to the students. You see, ang makahatag sa ila og satisfaction in school, which will contribute to their academic performance, is their level of satisfaction tungod kay naamoy nindot nga relationship with them. Meanwhile, according to Archambault in 2017, children in general are known to be deeply affected by their relationships with teachers while in school. It is therefore possible that such relationship could also influence the engagement of students in academic performance. Therefore, my dear friends, if we want our students to excel academically, let us develop a positive human connection with them with a, through a positive relationship. Alternately, the teacher-student relationships that is marked by conflict are linked with negative student outcomes such as unfavorable school attitudes, school avoidance, classroom disengagement, and poor academic performance. See, 
kung nindot ang relationship sa estudyante, nindot iya. Sa iyang relationship ni estudyante with peers and with uh, with teachers, nindot iyang academic performance. Pero if naasa conflict, whether it will be with a co a classmates or friends or sa iyang teacher, dili nindot, uh, dili siya makakontribute sa academic performance. When considering the entire schools and whether or not they foster a sense of community, belongingness is moderately correlated with academic performance. Kung tanaw ni mo ang academic performance sa estudyante and belongingness sa school, moderate lang ang iyang relationship. Meaning to say, the more I feel belong to the school, moderate ang akong academic performance or moderate ang relationship sa akong academic performance which is marked by reading and mathematics and science score. However, kung ang individual students na sense niya nga belong siya sa iyang peers o sa iyang teacher, that sense of belongingness is strongly related to performance. You see, individual level they ay ang relationships nga ginapangita sa bata. Dili nga na belong siya sa school but na belong siya sa osa ka person. Whether this person is a classmate, a friend or a teacher. Da nindo cha nga nindo cha ng experience sa estudyante. Now I am going to share with you some quotes which I have gotten from the internet about taking care about human relationships and taking care of them of our students. According to this, no matter how much pedagogy we know, no matter how many degrees we have, unless our students know that we care, they will not learn from us. In another cartoon that I have seen from Sinisha, Charles and Snoopy, it says, to make a difference in someone's life, you don't have to be brilliant, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be beautiful or perfect. You just have to care. So how do we show that we care? I have gotten some quotes from highly esteemed educators. I'm going to share their quotations with you. According to Dr. Justin Tart, each student walking down the hall deserves eye contact and a positive greetings. This is an easy way to show that we care as well as we model adulting for our students. So, dili na di ay necessary nga maghulat ta nga sila pa'y mag-good morning sa ato ah, no? Say, mag-check ta sa ato mga kauban. Kani ba ito ang estudyante? Kedi, good ka good morning. How about if we flip the situation? How about if we model the adulting to our students? How about if kita ang mag-good morning sa ila? Dili man makuha ng atong sweldo, no? So, it's a challenge. And I think it's beautiful. According to Dr. Evan Robb, human connection starts by saying hello. Never be too busy when walking down a hall and say hi to a student. It is simple but absolute, absolutely makes a difference. According to Dr. David Gurin, don't smile until Christmas is the worst advice ever. Laughter makes learning better for everyone, the students and the teacher. Remember, Kids learn more from teachers who smile. According to Dr. Kyla Delzer, so many kids waited all weekend to see your smile and get back to your classroom. Let's greet every child at the door tomorrow morning and show them how very loved they are. Kay wala ta kahibalo friends. Kung sa ilang balay, away lang pirmi ang madunggan sa ato mga estudyante. Wala ta kahibalo, no? For, for example, na mga estudyante nga mga well-to-do. But wala ta kahibalo nga wala na di ay makita sa mga estudya, sa mga ato mga estudyante ang ilang parents. Tungod kay busy na kay ang parents sa trabaho or sa negosyo. Wala ta kahibalo kung naapabay smile sa ilang balay. That is why excited sila mo ato sa ato iskwilahan kay sa iskwilahan na ang atong smile. According to Dr. David Urin, Poor student behavior is almost always an attempt to meet an unmet need. It is probably not about you as the teacher. It is just that you happen to be present in the moment. But as the adult, your response 
makes a huge difference. Consider the experience of students who have received very little approval at school. Is it any wonder why they don't adopt the identity of a learner? Your efforts to affirm and encourage each of your students might be what is needed to build up their confidence. Idea According to Dr. Justin Tart, find a student whom you think cannot be trusted. Give them a task and put your trust in them. Give them the opportunity to shine. Who knows? Basin pa di ay. According to Dr. Will Richardson, no one remembers a teacher because of a grade they got in a class. The teachers we remember allowed us to learn, not forced us to. They inspired us to force our own unique paths. They took an interest in our lives and held us into their care. No numbers for that. Sige daw, huna-huna daw. Kinsa tong paborito ni mga teacher nga nakatouch gyud sa imong heart and makaingon ka at this point in time nga katugyud si ma'am or si sir. Dako ka ito siya contribution sa akong life. Mahinumduman ba nimo ang grade nga nakuha nimo sa iya ha? Or mahinumduman nimo ang iyang simple gesture of giving you small sky flakes o gapi during recess time nga gigutom na gyud kaayo ka? Tapos yung time nga nabagsak siya, nag-smile siya. And then, he, she or he gave you encouragement. Kay na, 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 nasabta niya nga nung nabagsak ka sa quiz. No? Dr. Brad Johnson said, Admin, do you want to motivate your staff? Teachers, do you want to motivate your students? The most powerful motivator is L-O-V-E, love. Show them that you care, support them, and have their best interest at heart. And people will go beyond and even move mountains if possible. Isn't it wonderful? According to Dr. Hans Apple, learn what it takes to create a daily climate of joyful learners armed and ready to make the world a better place. Every student you pass by in the hall has a story that needs to be heard. Maybe, just maybe, you are the one meant to hear it. Just listen. Just stop. Say good morning. Say hi. Smile. Give an encouraging word. Affirm your student. Love them. Show them that you care. And you will be amazed at how beautifully and wonderfully they will be performing in your class. I hope that you learned something from this webinar and I hope I have imparted something beautiful in your heart as a fellow teacher. To recap, new normal is likely to stay. No, We are here. The new normal is here. So what we, what we do, let's embrace it. Let's embrace the 21st century. Because the 21st century has complex need that only the equipped can survive, that only the equipped can thrive. Therefore, our learning and teaching strategies should equip our students into this complexity of the 21st century skills. And let us not forget to uphold the human connection always in all ways. Because human connection is salient to human survival. Again, this is Dr. Sara Namoko, your friend and your partner in your teaching practice. I would like to invite you to my YouTube channel where I will be posting video tutorials about, about research and pedagogy. Once again, this is Dr. Sara Namoko. Thank you and bye-bye.